Hello Insiders, this is Tech Inside, I'm your host Eric, and today's show will- Imposter! Ah! Alright, welcome Insiders, I'm your actual host Eric, and I'm with- I, I'm Zap. And what are we actually going to be doing in today's video? Well, we're going to be going over the Steam Watch feature, which is a feature that uh, Steam released earlier in their beta application that lets you watch other players' games. We'll also be taking a look at Steam's in-home streaming service, which actually is out of beta now. So for our test today, for the watching slash broadcasting feature to let people watch what you're doing on different computers, as well as to share games in-house with different computers, we're going to be using a few computers for this test. Uh, our host computer is going to be... Um, it is a custom build with a Intel i5. It has 8 gigs of RAM and two GTX 760s with SLI. So overall, it's going to be a pretty powerful machine. A little bit more powerful than mine because the SLI. Um, when it comes to the other computers we're going to be using that are not going to be the host, first we have my MacBook Pro. My, this is the 13 inch from 2011. We'll also be using my uh, new MacBook with the NVIDIA 750M and a little crappy tablet, which. A uh, WinBook <laughs> with 1 gig of RAM. It also, nothing powerful. Uh, yeah. It has like an Intel Atom processor. Yeah. So honestly, it's gonna be interesting to see if anything actually is gonna run on that tablet. We're just throwing it in, cause why not? Getting right into the test when it comes to the broadcasting slash watching feature that Steam has in their beta version. Uh, we tested out a few games and some of them were. Crisis 2, Trine 2, and Left 4 Dead 2. Now our goal with this was we wanted to test a very intensive GPU game, intensive CPU game, as well as just some casual games. And overall, our conclusion pretty much was is heavy CPU usage, and it it tries to avoid using your CPU to lower your game frame rates. But if your game is using a lot of CPU, it will hardly be able to allocate any CPU usage. For any game that took up a lot of CPU power, the streaming didn't go so well. Obviously, when you're broadcasting your game to another computer, you're going to need to have a pretty decent internet connection, and we had that here. But even though his computer had a pretty nice CPU in it, when it comes to games, if the game is using up too much CPU power, like pretty much above 50%. Yeah, Crisis, um, Crisis 2 was practically using all of it. So it was, we weren't getting frame drops, but the viewing, we were getting like massive frame, like skipping and stuff like that. Yeah, as soon as we opened up the game, or as soon as we opened up the watching feature on another computer, the CPU really had to push to its limits to broadcast the actual image on the internet to the other computers. And that basically killed performance. I mean, on his computer, it, it was okay, yeah at least depending upon the game, yeah. but on like my computer, it was very choppy and unwatchable. It was actually kind of weird when we tested out trying to, um, my computer, I mean both my Macs, actually were pretty good. I mean they were getting about at least 30 frames per second, which was, I mean it's playable, but then on the desktop, it was getting like only like 24, 26, or 26 24, around that and anything under 30 is definitely not really playable. Okay. So to clarify, the GPU had no effect on the viewing performance. So carrying right along from broadcasting and watching, what about in-home streaming? Well originally the in-home streaming feature was a beta feature, but now it's not. I don't know when it actually became a non-beta feature, but that's besides the point. If you have multiple devices, obviously like a nice PC, and then something like a tablet, or a computer, or even now like TV boxes, and you want to stream a game to another device, you can now do that. But how good is it actually? So to start out, we tested this on the WinBook tablet, and the games we tested, some of them, were Bioshock Infinite and Cave Story. Now Bioshock Infinite, we did experience some hiccups, they were kind of unpleasant, not terribly common. When there was like a lot of dialogue going on, it was kind of like distracting and stuff like that. It was, it was playable to an extent, like you could play it comfortably for a while, it wasn't like this perfect PC experience. And also there, were, there was definitely a lot of um, compression and high contrast issues. Now of course realize the WinBook has nothing really special when it comes to the technical features in it, and neither is the screen that great, but we still definitely saw a little bit of a quality loss, and performance, although it could have been improved, 
it still definitely is playable whether it be a 2D game or even a pretty like th a 3D advanced shooter. It still could handle it, but I mean if you have a PC with you, you might just want to play on that. So we also tried streaming games on a computer, my MacBook Pro with the nice i7 processor and 750M graphic card, which is a pretty ideal situation. I mean this computer can handle some games by itself without being streamed. And we tried out a few games, Dead Space is one of them, as well as Dear Esther, and there was still a few hiccups here and there, which was a little bit interesting. Again, that could have just been some network issues, but we, I mean, we had pretty good, a pretty good network here, so it couldn't have been that bad, but it was perfectly playable. Um, when it comes to quality, I didn't really notice any quality loss. What about you? There was practically no quality loss. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty good. And also, I mean, this has a really nice display, lots of pixels, so I think we would have noticed if there's any quality loss, and it seemed pretty good. Now, I keep mentioning there's little hiccups here and there, and don't freak out about that. I mean, I'm used to running games at full 60 frames per second or even higher with no issues on a PC. And streaming a game, it actually is good, especially if you're on a decent computer and have a decent network signal. I say hiccups as in just like one stuck frame here and there, or an audio cue dropped for a second. It's really not that bad. Of course, it's going to depend on your hardware and your internet connection. You will definitely need to have a good internet connection and decent hardware, though you might not need like a full like a 750M graphic card or even like a desktop grade graphic card. You could probably get away with a lot of integrated cards now today, like the Iris, Iris Pro by Intel or AMD's APUs. Those should all perform quite well when you're just streaming a game. You don't really need anything overkill. And honestly, if Steam just works on the watching feature to utilize the CPU better, because right now it's a very CPU intensive task, if they could optimize that a bit better, the watching feature actually could be pretty nice. And I mean, obviously the watching feature still is in beta and there's a reason why it's in beta. If they can optimize the CPU, that'll be great. It'll also be better if they could work on the quality a bit more. I mean, quality was relatively okay. I don't have to complain about that too much. There was some compression here and there, but that is what you expect. The unfortunate part though is when I was like watching it on like my Mac, when I was watching the gameplay, I couldn't actually adjust the quality. He had it set to full 1080p, which is nice. I mean, it's great to see the image at a high resolution, but I couldn't adjust it. And there'd be a nice way if I could adjust it to like 480p or 720p, maybe because my internet can't handle all the data streaming. Or my device. Or, or that <laughs> device, which kept crashing, but we're not going to talk about that. Alright, so there is Steam's watch feature as well as in-home streaming. If you want to see more of these kind of reviews and this testing out uh, features within gaming or computers or anything like that, uh, let us know in the comment section below. Anyway, I'm Eric. And I'm Zach. And we'll see you in a future video. Goodbye. <laughs>